Welcome to Aaron Plays. This will be my first episode in playing Hands in the Sea solo, I'm doing my best for both factions, the Romans and the Carthaginians. But first off, I will discuss about the game, what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and um, see if I can inspire any of you to actually get this game itself. Hello there. Hands in the Sea, it's a game that I purchased recently. Is that coming up? There we go. Ooh, this is virtual background. There we go. Um, after playing it at a friend of mine's place, um, where he, uh, well, we've played it twice face to face. Um, I played it once as Carthage, I once as Rome, and lost both times. Um, and both games felt totally different, which is a good thing. Um, I went after the first time we played, I went out and purchased it. Um, and it's a very promising continuation of the system or evolution of the system that was first started with Martin Wallace's A Few Acres of Snow. Um, uses the same idea of a deck builder, um, but has added some bells and whistles um, to make the game. Does it make it more interesting? No, but it may make me a bit more varied. Might be a better way of, of looking at it. So yes, I've got the actual board game, So, but I'm gonna play it on, on Vassal. Now, some time ago, I did Upfront um, on my channel. And what I did there to play it solo was I didn't look at the cards of the other faction until it was their actual turn. Or if there was something like an intercept, well, in, in, in there it was conceal or anything like that that was required. And I will do the same here. So when I draw a hand, I'll draw a hand for the Romans and I'll look at the Roman hand. And when it's time to do anything with the Carthaginians, I was in their turn, then I'll look at the Carthaginian hand. Um, I won't be going through a detailed analysis of the rules. There, there are other videos out there that do that. Um, I, as I say, I've only played the game twice, so this is, is, is actually a learning game for me because when I play my friend again, I would like to actually have a little bit more hope of um, winning the damn thing. Um, but the game's set up, ready to go, and um, it'll be the Romans that will go first. So I will reduce or remove this mini me of me. And um, I'm not sure, I'll, I'll, I'll try and get the videos at about 20 minutes each, see how we go, or maybe a, a whole turn, um, and which is a whole thing through the cars, and we'll see how we go from there. Okay. Right, well, that's the mini me moved. So the first off is the Romans get five cards. And they will be placed in their deck. Okay, which I'll bring up. Here's the Romans' initial hand. So if you've seen a few acres of snow, a lot of this will actually mean um, something. They replace wine for furs. Um, We've got colonialists. This is the amount of money you can pick up from each card. The S shows it's a star at the starting cards. So the Romans start with a hand of 11, the Carthaginians 12. Um, the actual border color refers to where the car's um, base city is. So the red is Italy, yellow is Sicily. And there's green ones for Corsica and Sardinia, and blue borders for Africa. Um, so that's what the borders mean. The actual values here, you know, victory points that this, each of the cities are worth. These here show road routes from each of the locations. So if we look at Cosa, which is up here. Okay, it says it's got a road route 
There's a road there. Okay, and a road there. And that is shown on the card as a road route from P to Pisa and Rome. It's also got a naval route to Aleria and Old Bayer, which are here and here. So to be able to move from location to location, you must have a card that has that move route upon it. Uh, there's only one actual physical piece that can be moved on the board, and that is these fleets here. Okay, otherwise, you're just placing towns and or settlements. No, they are towns. Yeah, towns, and then um, hopefully upgrading the cities. So if I wanted to move or place a settlement here from Koza, I must have that Koza card in my hand. Um, a ship to actually move. And because it's got a little man in it, a co colonialist. So theoretically, the Romans have got that. They've got the Koza card. They've got a ship. And they've got a colonist. So that could be an opening move. To be able to move to a place, it'll be a ship move. The ship must be down here. So that's just there. All that shows you is what the ship moves to. Down here, that is a cart move, so road movement. So I think if you want, you don't have to settle into Rome because they're already in Rome, but if you, if they wanted to go to Rome for whatever reason to settle it, you would need to play this card with a cart. So they can't use the same cart that's on that card, a separate card with that, and then a colonist. But Rome's obviously Roman already. So that's how you colonize an area. So they could either go into an area or they could go into Olvia. There is worth two victory points. These ones here are only worth one. And if there's a little colonial sitting in the um, symbol, you must have a colonialist card in there. Okay. We're jumping a little ahead of ourselves. Um, each round um, that a, a faction has you get to do or perform two actions, uh, except on the first round, which we're gonna do in a moment uh, for Rome and then for, for Carthage. And then it's two actions from there on. There are quite a few actions that you can do. I'm not gonna go through all of them um, right at the start, as and when I think it's necessary, we'll go through them. Um, I've just shown you there what's called settle a location action which is what they call an expansive action expansive actions are set a location which i've just shown you develop a location fortify a location or build a warship you're expanding what you already actually have um so i'm actually going to do that as the romans first action as I showed you there. So they're going to play Koza. Okay. Then they're going to play a ship to travel there. And then they're going to play a colon col colonist, colonialist, colonist. Those are the three cards. And that allows them to place a town. in an area. Okay. What that actually means when it comes to victory points, they now control there. Okay. And if the Carthaginians want to take it off them, well, they're going to have to have, get a route up to an area, which I don't believe they have. It's your route determined by the cars that you currently have. So for them to get to an area, they'll have to develop either a road route here or here, into Iberia and then to Iberia, or a sea route, which I think there's a Carolis, Albia, and then to Iberia. And then they'll need to have some troops to take it off the Romans. Okay, now I wonder if I can just discard those. No, um, that'd be too easy, wouldn't it? Okay, 
I got to just got a pile. Okay. Now this is a deck builder. So they could have spent money. This is the money here. Five, four, Rome, six, four, Carthage, which in the actual physical game is, is cardboard coins. Unless you've got the Kickstarter extra where you can actually get physically in that. Lovely looking coins. Um, and then they will draw to fill up their hand. Now, I wonder if I, if I draw a card, is there anywhere I can keep it invisible to me at the present moment? Uh, no. So we'll leave them with the two cards they've got. And then when it comes to them drawing their hand, I will then draw the three cards if, if necessary. Because I don't want to know exactly what each faction's got. So I can play each faction to the best of my ability. But at the present moment, we've just earned around two victory points whenever we count victory points. I hear you clamor. Well, what's the point of all this? How, how, how does a faction win? How does the game end? What are they actually trying to do? Well, that's a really good question. The game ends when certain um, conditions occur. Uh, let's go that. So the game does not end in an automatic victory. And we'll come to what automatic victory is in a minute. And the game lasts until one of these conditions has been met at the end of a player's round. So any one of these. A player has placed all of his town or city tokens on the board. Okay. So the president of Rome's got eight cities and nine tokens. Carthage's got six cities and ten sorry, tokens and, or towns. Ten towns, six cities. So if Car Carthage, as you can see, has got less, manages to build all six of those cities, the game will end at that point. Then you count at victory points, play with the most victory points, wins the game. Okay. Um, that's what happened in my last game. The uh, Carthaginians finished the six cities. He was ahead on victory points and he, he forced the end of the game. Um, I was just starting to get ahead of steam military wise, uh, but he ended the game quickly. Now, these cities just can't be built anywhere. It can only be built on these locations where there is that little colonialist. Okay, so they've got two on the board already, here and here. In their home provinces is Makara, Hippo, Accra, they could build a city there. You can't build cities on these areas that have got little squares on them. So you can build one there, one in Little Bayum, Panamas, Agaragentum. So there's one, one, two, three, four, five. They only need one other city site, either Syracuse, Messina, Alaria, and they build those up from a town to a city. End of game. That's one way. To build up to a city, a, a town to a city, you must have a card and a colonialist. And you just upgrade it from a town to a city. So it's quite easy, but you've got to have the card in your hand to do so. Second way that the game can end. A player has captured 10 points worth of town and or city tokens from his opponent. Town is worth one big point or one point, and a city is worth two points. So if you capture any of these, they don't go back in their pool, you, you, you keep hold of them. And so as soon as you've got 10 points, again, game ending conditions. A player has eight prestige points. Okay, prestige points are earned if you win battles. Okay, so that's tracked down here. Up here for Rome. 12 turns have elapsed. There's your turn marker. Now, a turn is one complete playthrough of the Carthaginian deck in the, in the actual Carthage. Sorry, I'm circling the Romans. Here's a card. At the bottom of the Carthaginian deck is a, what's called a campaign card. That ends the turn. One of the things that you do when you go through what's called an end of turn sequence, which we'll do when we get there is you move the turn mark on. So if 10, 12 turns have elapsed, the game will end. Or a player has scored at least 90 victory points, both sides on zero at the moment. Victory points are scored 
at the end of a turn. A piece random event causes the game to end. Okay, there is a random event. Random event deck. Um, that's one of the big differences between this and Few Acres of Snow. Um, you've got a random event deck. And if a piece one causes the end of the game, okay, I think there are options on there. Now, automatic victory, Rome wins immediately if either a battle is won in Carthage or Rome settles in Carthage. The Carthaginians win immediately if either a battle is won in Rome or Carthage settles Rome. Also, a player wins automatically if either there is at least 25 VP lead over the opponents at the end of a campaign or a player has captured every location in Sicily. Uh, that's the one I was going for in my previous game with Rome. Just trying to take out all of Sicily. Well, he built it all up quicker than I could do that. So you've got to watch what um, each of the factions can do. So that's how the game ends. Um, so at the present moment, we've just had the Romans do their first turn. I will now get the draw cards for the Carthaginians. Carthaginians initial hand. They're showing the cards with the blue borders, or the star as their capital, victory points, and the same sort of things on here. Remember, this is the first turn, so they only get one action. Um, so they could, at this present moment, what they've got there, the rear, Carthage, Theres, Hippo Acra, and Panoramus. Okay. So they could, at this point, because they had have a colonist and panoramas, they could upgrade that to a, to a city, um, if that's, that's an option for them. Here's a list, the first page, of the actions they can do. So develop a location, you need the intended location card plus a colonial symbol, replace town cube with a, it says with a disc, well, in this case, it's a little, a bigger block, shall we say, building. In the actual physical game, it's actually, it's not a disc either, it's a bigger, towns are little wooden blocks, um, like tent symbols, and the um, other ones have got like a tent with a little extra length to them. So that's an option. Okay, so they could increase Panoramas or Hippo Acre, there's a spare colonies over here, to um, take into account and make it a city. However, the other option is, I want the Carthaginians, because I saw this in the game, it was quite useful. In these, each faction, empire, let's call them empires, not factions, empire, has a deck of cards that they can buy from. Okay, any card has a cost, some, some of the costs are already zero, but yeah, they have a cost. You can, as an action, you can buy one of these cards. Obviously, the Carthaginians can only buy from this deck, and the Romans can only buy from this deck. However, both can buy from this deck over here. And these cards, I've just thought about it now, a good point. The Romans took Illyria, so they should actually get the Illyria card. Okay, hold on, let me just pull it out. All right, so that card, because the Romans took an area, that card goes into their deck. Okay, it's got a ship on it. It's not a great card, but it's a, it's a transport one. But the main thing is it does allow them to move from an area by road, Old Bio, Old Baia, or by ship to Pisa, Cosa, or Ostanto. Where's Ostanto down here? So it allows them to, if that's in their hand, expand, but it goes to their discard pile. Yep, got to do that already. Okay, the other thing, right, so back to the Carthaginians, they want to buy a card from here. Um, what cards are actually in here? Let's have a look, you've got, yeah, you can look through the decks. So there's 
triremes gives them ships. There are troops, mercenaries that we can add. The main thing they want though is this one, colonists. Okay, because they, the Romans have more colonists. I mean, if you think about the history of the period, there was always more Romans. Carthaginians struggled with getting people in and around. They want to buy this as their action to make sure A, the Romans don't stop them having it, and B, it's useful because they have a lack of colonists in their hands. So they're gonna buy that and it costs five. That will go into their discard pile. And let's subtract five from there. And that concludes, because they only got one action. So that was a, what would they call that? Is that a financial action? Um, Right, verse three, what other action is going to page two? Card management actions. You see, there are quite a few actions here. Take one empire or neutral card from those available, pay money if necessary. Play card with colonial symbol also if necessary, because sometimes when you buy a card, you've got to have colonials, but you don't need a colonial to buy a colonial. Add the card to the top of your discard pile, or pay double to add it to the top of your draw pile if it has a silver cost. So they could have paid 10, you know, get that into their hand next time. But considering they haven't actually spent anything from their hand, that's the end of their action. That's the end of their round. So we go back to the Romans. Okay, the Roman turn. So they're down to, well, we know they'll have five castles, but ah, now that's one thing I don't like about Vassal. Will allow me to have both screens open. I'll do things on two screens. So we draw three cards into the Roman hand. And then let's bring it up. Okay. So now they've got two actions. Um, one of the things, again, that I was conscious about at the start of the game, Carthaginians have got. Warships, they've got two, and rows of zero. Naval battles are in this game, whereas, in, again, in the um, Puerto Snow, it's not. It's more abstract. I mean, it's still fairly abstract with one fleet counter, but you actually do get involved in naval battles. The other thing which we haven't discussed are these here, strategy cards. Um, these are available to purchase. Each fact, empire, I get it right, each empire can have a maximum of one strategy card. The cost is here. That is, the, that is the cheapest one. If you want to buy this card, it'll cost you that cost plus that. Well, this card, it'll cost you that card plus that. If any faction buys one of these, the cards are moved forward and the next one drawn from the, the hand. So let's have a look at what these actually are. Strategy cards, loyalty, your opponent. And this is only applicable to only the Carthaginians can purchase this. So your opponent, Rome, must pay a total of three silver to the bank per a bribe attempt. Attempt. Yes, we've got bribes in this, um, which we'll, again we'll, we'll, we'll discuss when we have the feeling the need to bribe. You can bribe mercenaries. Um, and guess which army has quite a lot of mercenaries in it? The Carthaginians, yes. Okay. So if the Carthaginians purchase this, they can ignore the mercenary revolt event um, and it downplays the rebellion random event. So having that might be useful for them. The Romans can't purchase it, but they can get rid of all the cards on here at a cost. Um, what is that cost? Not too sure at the present moment. Let me pause. Okay, so... It says cycle strategy cards, discard one, two, or three strategy cards on the strategy card track, paying the appropriate cost if more than one card is discarded. Okay, so what that actually means, now I've referred to the rules, is if Rome doesn't like that card, as an action, they can get rid of it. Okay, then all these shuffle up one space. If Rome doesn't like that and that card, it'll cost them one SP. They don't like all three, so they can get rid of all three, it'll cost them three SP. Two for that card, one for that card. And then three new random events. Um, 
So that's, that is an action. So we've got two actions. Really don't want the Carthaginians to have that one um, because that makes their army a little bit more solid. But structure card here, you may, so this is the Corvus that made the Romans have fight their naval battles as land battles. Plus four does make the ships a little bit more vulnerable to the storms at sea. We need that. I don't think we need that at the present moment. And Devotio. Modify all random events and variable strengths, barrels, and your one in your favor. That could be quite powerful because the random events um, are random. They can they can hurt. Um, but again, it's something that keeps you know, you've got to be aware of them, and therefore the option to buy something that can make them less devastating could be good. But let's go back to what the Romans have in their hand and see, you know, what's they've got five money. Um, you can get money by, they could just throw the card, what's called a, I think it's called a trade action, uh, trade, play one card, no, that's, take money, that's right, take money action, they could just discard this card to the discard pile and collect the three money, which will go into their money over here, that's an action. If you have a ship here, down, down the bottom here, you can do what's called a trade action. Play one card with a ship symbol on it, and then one or two cards with a silver on it. So as an action, you could take that card, and then they could take that card and that card and earn five money as a single action. I mean, they could do that card and that card as two take money actions, but that one gives them obviously more money and one action still left over. Um, and also they could still do moves from where they are now. One of the things they need to think about is taking out Saracus. Okay, that's one of the things that's advised as soon as possible. But to take out Saracus, they must have something that can get to Saracus on here. Um, and at present, ah, Messina can. Sorry, Messana can. So they could play that with a ship, that one down there. And because they're actually Syracuse is a neutral power, they're attacking it, they must have something with a sword. Can't use that one, so that one. That's not really that powerful, is it? No. I'll come to explain why it's not powerful in a moment. Um, in the Roman deck here, uh, what's left of the deck, there is a Roman legion which has got two swords. Ideally, that's what they want to be able to go and take out Syracuse. The reason why I say it's not too powerful, each, when it comes to battles, it's done pretty similar to a few acres of snow. And if you haven't played a few acres of snow, I'll explain. Rome, when, when Rome decides to, to attack a place, the area gets one this, this here is what tracks the battle. It's a battle track. So when you attack an area, each area has an inbuilt innate defense of one. So it goes one into the opposing color, we would say. But Syracuse has a little pair of cross swords here that puts it another point in there. Okay, so that's its natural defense. So when you come to attack it, you need to get this disc into at least the gray so that when it's the blue player's turn, if this was still in the blue, the siege would be broken. What the Roman player wants to have this in the red at the beginning of their turn, and then it's a, it's a one victory, game up, battle over. So they, they've only got two swords here. And one of those gets them two. Well, I suppose they could use Tarentus to get to Syracuse as well. Ah, yes. So they could use that, plus that, plus a sword to get it started. And then there's the other action, play another sword. I think it's a bit early for that at the present moment. So what's to do with their two actions? Well, I think... Because I want to get through that deck to get the, the soldiers, I need to burn some of these cards. 
So I'm going to do that fleet action, the um, trader, to get some more cash. So we will do Neopopolis for its ship, and we will trade in that for three, and another two. That's a total of five money. One, two, three, four, five. And that's their first action. So they all go in the discard pile. This next action, now we've got some money. Might be worthwhile. Do we get, hmm. We really don't want the Carthaginians to have that. Will they take it? Now, actually, I don't know. It's a good card. So this is the problem when you're playing it two-handed, mm, I suppose. Yeah, I've been playing both factions. I'm sort of like out trying to outguess myself. Um, if I was playing Rome against a Carthaginian player, I would get rid of that. Don't mind that staying on the board. So in actual fact, as an action, I'm discarding that card there. Well, nothing. And then these move down. And the new one comes in there. Boom. Okay. Well, that's a good card as well. Oh, dear. It's almost as good as that one. Right. All right. So that ends the Roman go. I won't draw the Roman cards until necessary. But they've got... You have always fill your hand back up to, to five. Okay, so the Carthaginians. Right. So last time the Carthaginians. Um, what? They bought the, that card there, didn't they? Right. Okay. What are we going to do with them? So well, I said they don't have many... Colonists, but we've got two cards here with colonials on it. We've only got one money though. They're a bit short of the old cash. So I think they're going to do a trade action, which they'll play that ship with four, five, six money towards them. Okay, that's their first action. Let's put those in the discard pile. And their second action. Okay. Taurus, where are you? They're going to buy that seamanship card. That is a good card. So that's actually going to cost them five. Three plus the two there is five. What does this card actually give them? As an action, you may pay one silver to move your fleet to Z zones. And once per round, you may reinforce the coastal location even if it's out of supply. Okay, might not mean an archer at the moment, but that is very powerful. Storms at sea, you can ignore the event. Naval disasters treat this event as if it was storms at sea, so they downgrades random events. Um, normally, you can, as an action, move your fleet one space. So if you pay a bit of money, you can actually move two, so it makes it very fast. And that once per round, you may reinforce a coastal location, even if it's out of supply. Um, if you're not on the map, there's little these little supply symbols. Okay. Um, if... A enemy fleet is in a sea zone next to an island. You can limit your reinforcements that are brought in. Um, that strategy card circumnavigates that. So for a cost of five, we're going to purchase that. Okay, and then there's a new strategy card drawer. Okay. Right. So it's back to the Romans. There's the two cards they had remaining. So they draw another three. One, 
two. Okay, so this is their hand. So that's that Legion I was on about. So they've still got the Messina card. But now they don't have a ship. Okay. Katana. No Katana either. Masuna can only go to Syracuse if there was a ship down here. So they can't begin the invasion now. Um, so what they're going to do now, as so I notice that, uh, that the Carthaginians have got that seaman ship. Um, and the Carthaginians have got two ships. And the Romans have got zero. It might be time to start building a fleet themselves. To build a fleet point costs three money and a clone list. So we'll do that. There's a clone list. Cost us three. Let's start a building a fleet. Okay, next thing, this legion. They're going to put in their reserve. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's plonk it here. Spend one action to put a card in reserve. All right. So it's being, basically it's taken out of the hand. It's placed into here. Maximum, I think it's five cards in reserve. Max five cards, yeah. You spend one silver per card to retrieve from the reserve. And it's a free action. So it's not doesn't cost you one of your two actions. So when you so now it's out of your hand, they can draw more cards into the hands. And when they got the right cards, they can do that invasion of Syracuse. And with that in mind, um, you can then bring the troops back in to your hand to then lay the siege. So it's a, it's a process that so by putting the Legion in there, I'm hopefully doing a draw cards that allows me to go to Syracuse. I then spend the money, one silver, to bring that out or stop. And then I can um, attack Syracuse with a, that force of two. And that's their two actions. So they built the fleet and they put something into reserve. Okay. The Carthaginians do not start with any actual troops like this. They're in here, but they don't start with um, an actual physical lead comparable to the Legion. Okay. So that's the end of the Romans. Over to the Carthaginians. Okay, so they've got two cards, so I'm now drawing three more. So this does leave me in a doubt, you know, what's, I can't sort of plan the best strategy for what the cards they've got. Just hope that they get something decent. Right, okay. Um, so we've got the Romans starting there. Let, let's see, can, what's... Okay, when the Carthaginians start actually expanding a little bit. Um, okay, so they've got Lilibaeum. So they could start going down to Heracle. So let's do that. Lilibaeum needs a cart. So it allows road transport. So from Lilibaeum down to Heracle using road transport allows them to place town. Don't need a colonist for a town. Anyway, there's a little, a little man. Okay. Which then means that they get a specific card. We want Heracle. That will be going into their deck. That's their first action. Okay, I think it might be time to get the fleet out. That's one action to move it one season. They could spend the silver. Um, 
and they could blockade Corsica and Sardinia. Because there are no supply sources here. But what would be the effect of that blockade? Okay, so the point of blockading that, it says it will stop the Romans being able to use that location card there to expand. So in order to use a location card for an action, you must control that location, which they would, and must be able to trace a line of supply to a supply point. The only supply point up there is Rome, and if I've got a fleet there, they can't trace naval supply through there. So, a location could trace a, supply, a line of supply over any number of land connections across any number of sea zones except for those that are enemy controlled. Okay. So, is that worth putting, spending a silver and blockading that? That means the Romans would have to come out. At the present moment, the Romans are, are, are one point less. When it comes to naval battles, we'll discuss it, but uh, they're, they're, they're weaker. So, I think. Well, we know the Romans haven't got that card in their hand yet. They must be in here because they we haven't had a shuffle of hands yet. So, but they will be shuffling soon. But that still gives us another action. So, no, we won't spend the extra silver. So, moving the fleet out um, and gaining a victory um, occupation down there will be the Carthaginians done. Okay. I need to keep track because, all right, so they've got two cards space here. All right, so remember the campaign card that ends the turn is in here at the bottom. So if they were had to draw that, that would end the turn at that point at the moment it's drawn. So um, that's not the case at the moment. So we're back to the Romans. They've got three. So that I hate it when it does that. Come on. Okay. Right. I, I, I don't know what it is. That I, I have to draw off, off piece, as it were. Okay. So that was one card. So these cards would have been shuffled. Uh, center draw deck. And then reshuffle. That twice. All right. So that's the cards they've now got. Okay, so we now know we've got a legion. Um, Athena. This is fleet, but they've got no fleet down here. Oh, we've got Timza. Anything else that can get to Syracuse? Katana. Where's Katana? Right next to Syracuse, yes. Okay. So we could use that card as a standing point. They can use one with a cart, and then they can use the legions if they pay for it. Right, OK. Let's do this. Let's go for Syracuse. So paying the, well, first off, pay a silver to get that legion out of reserve. OK. So goes into the hand. That's a free action, so I've still got two actions left. Okay, we then spend that card, Katana, to start there, to go to move to Syracuse. We then spend this card to show for its cart, to show we're moving, and then we'll spend this card to start the siege. It's taking a location action. So let's bring up the, it's called an aggressive action. <laughs> really? All right, so the connected location card, plus any other card of the wagon, gun or ship, and plus sword symbols. Two wagon symbols required for rough connections or straights, okay, see, all right. That's not a rough connection or a straight. That's a straight and a rough connection. These dotted lines here. So yes, yeah, so that's that's fine. So we've got everything to start the land battle. 
right. Um, the actual double swords here are placed in the Roman battle zone there. Okay, so it's again, it's removing from that. These two will go to the discard pile as, as normal. Okay. Now we need to set up the actual battle path up here. Okay. So the attacking player places their battle round token, which is this, next to where they're actually attacking. So that's the first round. So it's the first battle round. Um, as this is classed as a siege, because there's, what is it classed as a siege? Why are we just a battle? I've got four rounds. So we, I think a siege is when it's actually fortified. And fortified, hmm, what does the sword mean? It's fortified as well. I'll need to check. As I say, I'm still learning this game myself. Swords are a defense modifier. It's not fortified. Okay. So it says, right, so to set the initial strength, place the battle strength marker in the one space in favor of the defender. Okay, so it starts there. Okay. Every location has an intrinsic defense strength of one. Move the marker two additional spaces if it was fortified. It's not. And then one space in the defender's favor if there is the swords, which is the Syracuse, is a little bit tricky to take out. Boom. Hence, that's it starting. Now move the marker a number of spaces in favor of the attacker according to the military strength of the card that was initially played, which is one of those legions is two. That will move to the zero. Boom. And as it says in the rule book, the battle is now underway. The battle round token will increase by one in each subsequent round at the start of the attacking player's round. Okay. Location card of the area where the battle occurs may not be used for any action that it can still be that it can still be discarded, reserved, blah, blah, blah. Right, so we're in on the attack on Syracuse. That's the first action. As their second action, Rome, we're going to reinforce that battle with this card. Got a sword on it. That will also be placed there. Okay. And that will increase that to there. Now, at the start of the Romans' next round, if this was in the red, it would be a, a Roman victory. Syracuse would have been beaten. If it's in the blue, the, the, the battle is lost. If it stays in the grey, it's still ongoing. Special rule for Syracuse is that the Carthaginians cannot reinforce this battle. They cannot send troops there. But to be able to send troops, um, there must be a supply. And there's a few other requirements for sending, sending troops. Um, and they can't, but they can't do it to Syracuse anyway. So once we get to a battle, which they can, we'll go through reinforcements and such forth. So that, what they can do though, when it comes to their turn, they, they can use their fleet because that's not a supply source as yet until Syracuse falls, the Romans would be out of supply, which means they can't reinforce the battle. So that might be what the Carthaginians will do, and we shall see. Okay, so that's the two Roman actions over to the Carthaginians. All right, so they've got three cards, drawing two. Bit of a dilemma here. Okay. So they want to stop the Romans here, reinforcing, um, spreading, but they can slow down this fall of Syracuse. As they move there, the Rome, the, the by the area being um, cut off from supply, because at the present moment the Romans are only getting supply um, from Rome. They need Syracuse to supply down here. The supply can't go across the straits. Um, so they would need to 
get the Carthaginians out of this sea zone or move their own fleet into the sea zone. Uh, if both are existing in there, then no one controls it, then supply gets through again. Um, however, they've only got one fleet or one more ship to the Carthaginians, two strength. It's not in individual ships, of course, it's probably got a hundred. Um, so they can slow that down or that down, but they can't do both. Meeny, meeny. Um, that means they're not doing their own thing. I mean, what options they've got here? Right. This is a card that the Romans don't have, which is merchant. Remember, if you can trade, you could send in one ship and get two coins with this. Merchant card, discard any number of cards that have a wine symbol. One, two, three. And you collect two silver for each card discarded. So that would go earn them six silver. They are a bit strapped for cash. So let's do that. Yes. So the wine merchant comes out, and that'll be one, two. That's six monies. Okay. How about that? Um, as a next action, we really don't want the Romans to expand here. Is Syracuse too late? Ooh, I honestly can't make that decision. So I'm going to, I'm going to randomize it. I notice, oh, I just noticed there's no dice on this. Where's the dice? There's dice in the game. Oh, it's on the lower book. Yes, sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, I have this area um, narrowed down. Okay. So one, two, three, they're going to move their fleet to Corsica, slow them down here. Four, five, six to Sicily. Okay. They go for the block there. As I say, that, um, so now the Romans have got to start thinking, oh, we've got to build a fleet now. Or at least go and contest it. So that's the Carthaginians' two actions. Now that leaves Carthaginians. There's only one card here. So two cards are going to come into here. Now the first one will be a standard card. The second one will be the campaign card. All right, so I'm going to put the first one in there. And then the campaign card. Ooh, doesn't come actually out of here. It's interesting. Okay. Can I blow that up? No. Well, that's a bit uh, restrictive. Um, let me get mine out of my actual game. Okay, so campaign card reads, end of turn. Set card aside and reshuffle, draw deck. Okay. Uh, Set the draw deck. A reshuffle. I'm assuming as that card could move, that will still stay at the bottom. Carthage Jordan player draws back up to, to hand limit. All right, I'm trying not to look at the screen. So I can't see what the Carthaginian cards are. All right, I better put the Romans over the top. Draw and resolve a random event from the event deck. Okay, so the random event. Uh, okay, okay there then. Right, what's this one say? Epidemic, Carthage one to three, Rome four to six. If currently involved in a siege, lose one unit and adjust the battle track. This does not apply, then reduce one of your developed locations to a town. Okay, so let's see who this affects. One to three. Where's me? Nice pool area. There it is. All right. Oh, three. So one to three. It affects Carthaginians. All right. So they're not besieging anywhere. So if this does not apply, then reduce one of your developed locations to a town. We've currently only got two developed locations. Um, so Utica, 
It goes back in the pool. It comes the tail. And that goes the discard pile. That, that's a bit nasty. Okay, collect income and VP. Okay, so income, you gain one coin for each developed location. Um, so Rome gets two. Carthage now only gets one. Rude, but there we go. Victory points. You gain victory points for each area you've um, colonized or expanded to outside your initial areas. So at the present moment, the Carthaginians have, got, have gone to Heracle, which gives them one VP. The Romans have gone to Illyria. That's the only place they've expanded to, so they gain two VP, denoted by this. These ones numbers are actually in the spaces. Okay. Um, this strategy card is removed or discarded. Everything moves up one. At the present moment, the Romans haven't got a strategy card, and a new one goes in there. Okay. All right. Advance the turn marker. That was the end of the first turn. Put this card at the bottom of the Carthaginian draw deck. Okay. Um, so that's the sequence at the end of a turn. Okay, I'm going to pause at that point, um, end the episode. So if you like what you're seeing, hit the like and, and then subscribe if you haven't done so already. Um, hit the alert bell to get any warning indications that uh, I've got anything new. Any comments, much appreciated. Um, I'll be making another episode, uh, continuing this into turn two. Um, until next time, 